Hi, it's uh, Adam from Zero Friction Cycling. Uh, so this episode, I'm going to be covering a uh, very often requested topic of uh, ultrasonic cleaning guide and race chain guide. So um, this topic of, uh, of the guide so far has been pretty clunky. I've never really covered cohesively very well um, ultrasonic cleaning for like the normal chains with wet lubes um, and wax chains and then you know, race chains with either wet lubes or wax chains. Um, it's just kind of always ended up a little bit, yeah, a bit too clunky. So having another crack to see if I can get this right and a new guide will be online. All right, so first I'm just going to go through the ultrasonic cleaning um, a bit. So um, a question that I often get uh, is, you know, do I need an ultrasonic cleaner? Um, and especially if I'm looking to uh, do wax chains. Um, and the answer to that is definitely uh, no, you do not. Um, if you're just cleaning a chain because you're moving to immersive waxing, um, just doing the um, cleaning in the agitated container bars as I've got in my Wax Ed Master Guide and also in the, um, as I ran through in the waxing FAQ, um, that's perfectly, perfectly fine. You're going to get a great clean and you're going to get, you know, an absolutely great time with moving to immersive waxing with hugely longer lifespans um, and cleanliness than you're used to with um, your normal wet loops. Um, but some people really like the idea of an ultrasonic, so they uh, want to go and get one. And if you do get an ultrasonic, especially if you've got a decent one, uh, it will give you a little bit of an advantage in that case. So an ultrasonic will help get out some of the tiny you know, bits of metal particles that will be left inside the chain uh, from manufacture that the agitated container cleaning won't. Um, it's not something you're, you're really going to notice, um, though you're not going to track a tangible sort of longevity benefit in your just your normal chain that you've cleaned for waxing. So there's really not a need for the ultrasonics in that case, but uh, they can come in handy in a number of uh, cases. So if, uh, for instance, you're staying with wet lubricants, um, then periodic cleaning um, with the help of an ultrasonic, you will get, um, I guess, a perfect clean. Whereas if you're just using container method, you'll get a really, really good clean, um, but you won't get it quite as good as with an ultrasonic. So pretty much the method for if you're on wet lubes and you wish to um, do really good periodic maintenance, uh, if you've been watching or seeing any of my stuff, you know I'm not a fan of cleaning a chain on a bike. You just can't flush out all the old lubricant which has got the contamination in it properly when it's on your bike. So no matter what you sort of maybe seen on you know YouTube or elsewhere where they can spray on a degreaser or a cleaner with a chain on a bike. Uh, sure, it's a clean that's better than nothing. Uh, and some of it can be a decent clean if you, if you really have a good crack at it. But to do it properly, the only way really is to remove the chain and you know, clean the chain off bike, really flushing the solvent through the chain. So uh, before you move to an ultrasonic, um, you will want to do the container method first um, because what happens, one of the mistakes that um, people make with an ultrasonic is they take their chain off their bike, they put their solvent or cleaning solution into their ultrasonic, they put the chain in and they get the ultrasonic running um, and within about 10 seconds the solvent or cleaning solution in the ultrasonic has gone black uh, because you know all the gunk and stuff's just coming out straight away. Now if what's cleaning your chain is dirty not really any great cleaning is happening past that point so after about 10 or 15 seconds, nothing good is really happening. So um, yeah, the mistake people make is they run it for five minutes or 10 minutes and think that the ultrasonic has just done this magic clean and everything's you know absolutely amazing. Um, when in reality, not a lot of great stuff happened after the first 10 seconds. So um, you can do it in the ultrasonic by doing obviously bath after bath after bath until what's coming out of the ultrasonic is basically as clean as what went in. But um, to get the best clean, you know, it just takes more time to do that. You can rip through the container bars. So when you pop your chain off, you put it in the, uh, the container and like I demonstrated in an earlier episode, you can just go through bath after bath after bath very, very quickly. So the first one will go black almost straight away, pour out the uh, cleaning solution, wipe the chain, wipe the container, go again, go again, go again. When the um, solvent or clean solution is coming out basically almost as clear as when it went in, that is when you move uh, to the ultrasonic and the ultrasonic will then be able to get into all the nooks and crannies and tiny fissures uh, and get contamination out that you know, an agitated container bath will not get into. 
Now, the next mistake that people make uh, with their ultrasonic is that they don't do what's called a degas run. So um, ultrasonics actually work by basically uh, cavitation. You've got billions of imploding bubbles. Now, when you pour your cleaning solution in or solvent in, a bit like if, say, you've got a, a, you know, the reason why you have, say, a bubbler in a fish tank is because you need to, you know, oxygenate the water. Now, when you pour your solution in, you're going to oxygenate the solution that you've poured into your ultrasonic. So if there's gas in the water uh, or in your solution, that will fill the, you know, what are trying to be imploding bubbles to do the scrubbing action, and you won't get any imploding bubbles. So you won't get the scrubbing action from that uh, cavitation. So ultrasonics, you need to, um, whenever you pour new solution into your ultrasonic, you need to give it what's called a degas run first. Some ultrasonics have a degas function on it, which makes that a lot faster. So normally it will only take about sort of seven to 10 minutes if it's got a specific degas function. So it cycles through a very specific on-off pulse, which, which makes getting rid of any gas a lot, uh, a lot more efficient. Um, without a degas function, you're probably going to want to run it for about sort of you know 15 minutes at least. Um, you can you can do it with the it will degas if you just put your stuff in there and start it running. It will degas. It's just that the actual ultrasonic cleaning cycle overall will take a lot longer. It might be like a 30 minute run um, as opposed to one with a degas where it's sort of like a 10 minute degas and then a five minute clean and it's you know it, it will do an absolutely brilliant job in that sort of five minutes that it's in there. So. If you don't do a degas um, initially, just be prepared to basically let it run for say, you know, at least 20 to 30 minutes to make sure it's got um, time to, to really do its job. And uh, the other thing, I guess, really again, is that if the ultrasonic is getting in there a bit deep and getting into places that your agitated container bath won't, if what went in there is not coming out basically as clean as when it went in and you want to do a perfect job, then you go again until that's the case. And so, especially when we start sort of talking about, say, you know, race chains, you know, that's really the aim. What, what comes out needs to be as clean as what went in, then things are, are perfectly clean. But for periodic maintenance of a wet lube chain, an ultrasonic will do a, a, obviously a, a perfect, you know, brilliant job that you can't achieve with just a container method. But uh, you can do a great job, like a really great job by removing the chain and doing your agitated container bars. So in all honesty, most people, you really, you don't, it's not, a, I guess, a case of do you need an ultrasonic? No, you do not. It's more of a case, do I want an ultrasonic if it's just for, you know, periodic maintenance purposes because you want to play around and, and, and have a bit of fun with those. So that's, um, I guess, ultrasonic for, you know, um, wet lubes. Um, another sort of bit to cover off, I guess, is uh, what are you using in the ultrasonic to clean it? So. Personally, I use, uh, same as what I do for the initial prep with, um, with the factory grease on there, I use mineral terps followed by methylated spirits. They're sort of two really can't go wrong um, uh, solvents. But just be aware, um, you know, using such, uh, I guess, you know, you're going to be using solvents or chemicals that are flammable. Uh, it will release vapors and you've got unshielded electronics. So depending on your setup in your sort of house workshop, whatnot, Personally, I wouldn't do that um, inside your, um, you know, house, kitchen, um, and be careful, you know, even if it's in a garage. I would, if, I, if you're using solvents in an ultrasonic, uh, you're going to have flammable vapours. I would do that in a safe spot outside. Um, if you're using um, something like, I, I guess, like a more of a, what's called an aqueous cleaning solution, so like your, say, your Dawn detergents, uh, which are diluting in water, you don't have a solvent, uh, or sorry, a vapor, uh, vapor uh, flammable risk. So you're fine to do that, obviously, inside. And a lot of your, um, your detergents can actually do a pretty good job of, of cleaning your uh, chain. So that's, uh, I guess, sort of ultrasonic cleaning for your general uh, wet lube chain. Now, if it is a wax chain, um, things used to be trickier than they are now. So ultrasonic cleaning for your sort of molten speed wax chain or say hot melt, um, or even a lot of your wax, um, you know, coating lubes, used to be pretty tough because a lot of solvents just really don't work on uh, waxes. They, they just, waxes are pretty resistant to a lot of solvents. So it used to really be that if you were going to clean your wax chain in an ultrasonic to do a great clean, that you needed to go to a specific ultrasonic cleaning solution and you needed a temp temperature control ultrasonic because you needed to get that 
uh, solution up above the melting point of the wax, so the wax is super soft, and then the degas and the cavitation can scrub that old wax coating off extremely well. Uh, things have become a whole lot easier um, since the uh, advent of UFO Clean, which is designed to clean um, wax chains extremely well. Uh, so you can put your UFO chain, uh, sorry, Clean into your ultrasonic, give it a degas run, put your chain in there, give it a still give it a really good solid sort of 20 minutes uh, because just give it time to work on the wax. Um, and again, same with anything you want to, I guess, do the heavy lifting first. So before I move my chain into uh, the UFO clean, I will have done the boiling water flush rinses on my wax chain to melt off as much of the, the old wax coating as possible. Um, and then that will mean that my UFO clean, I'm going to go through a lot less of that and I'll get a lot of um, brilliant cleans out of my bottle of UFO clean before I have to worry about replacing um, or you know, get going to a fresh bottle of UFO clean because it's not that cheap. So you, you do want to try to keep that uh, clean for as long as possible. Um, so that's really made life a whole lot easier because temperature control ultrasonics are a lot more expensive than non-temperature control ultrasonics. Uh, one thing just to keep in mind in general, so this is just, I guess, your general maintenance for both wet loop chains and, uh, and you know, wax chains, um, and you're doing your ultrasonic cleaning as part of periodic maintenance, uh, is that you know, check the power, especially if you're buying a fairly cheap ultrasonic, check the power of the ultrasonic per litre. So a lot of ultrasonics, like it's, it's like a lot of things, it can be really misleading. You can buy a you know, really industrial, good-looking ultrasonic from you know, eBay or Amazon or Banggood, um, super cheap auto, and you know, they'll be pretty cheap. They might be under $100 or they're $120, but you know, they can often be quite big. They might be like six litres. And so, sure, they claim to be like 100 watts, um, you know, ultrasonic cleaning power. But, you know, 100 watts divided by six litres is not much, um, you know, power per litre. So with ultrasonics, it's really the power per litre that's going to be your best guide. Uh, you really, like for a bicycle chain, you're not, you know, jewellery, it's okay to be really low power. Bicycle chain, this, I guess your minimum sweet spot is sort of around about at least sort of 30 watts per litre. Um, about 50 watts per litre is brilliant. Um, sort of 70 watts per litre is probably at about the upper edge of, of where you want to go. Um, sometimes customers have cleaned their bicycle chain in their like auto parts, ultrasonic cleaner at, at their work, and it's actually pitted the chain metal. So like, like everything, there's a, you know, there's the right tool for the job. So you know, a building contractor doesn't have a lot of use for usually a watchmaker's hammer and a watchmaker usually doesn't have a lot of use for a sledgehammer unless the repair's gone really, really wrong. Uh, so, you know, there's the right level or the right strength. So about that sort of 30 to 70 watt per litre cleaning range is, is pretty well perfect for a bicycle chain. Um, so that's really covered off, I guess, just sort of general maintenance for um your wet lube chain or your wax uh, coating chain. I'm just going to make sure I haven't missed anything because I do struggle to stay cohesive on this fun little topic. All right. <clears throat> um, yeah, and I guess the only other thing is obviously once you've done your UFO clean, uh, if you're doing the, uh, the wax uh, chain, is still always uh, do a boiling water flush rinse. Uh, before you then re-wax and uh, you'll know if you've rinsed it out UFO clean when you start to rinse it it will initially be white uh, when you're rinsing it out and when the water is clear then all is good so um, if you're doing your ultrasonic clean uh, for a wax chain and using UFO clean then um, boiling water flush rinse first to do the heavy lifting degas good long run in UFO clean boiling water rinse to flush it out afterwards um, and that will give you a pretty spectacular clean. Um, all right, now race chains. So um, this is an area that uh, obviously a lot of people get quite interested in and that's a great thing. So the first thing I'll say about race chains is that if you, um, you know, race, then step one is have a dedicated race chain and a dedicated training chain. So like really it is pretty nuts to, when you think about it, to rock up to a race, especially if it's an important race, on the same chain that you've just hammered the last few thousand kilometres of your last training block on. 
you know, obviously if you think about, you know, world level stuff, you know, nobody's going to do that. You're not going to see, you know, Tadej Pogacar or you know, Egan Bernal or anyone rock up to the Tour de France or the Giro uh, and do a stage on the same chain that they just did their last, you know, two months of training leading up to it or the same for the Paris-Roubaix or, you know, anything. Why, why, why would you race on the same chain you hammer in training? So even on the best possible lubricants like, you know, M-Speed Wax and Silka Hot Milk, um, UFO Drift, all that stuff, over time, over thousands of kilometers, it is impossible to stop your chain from losing efficiency. The low friction coating will get compromised. The surface of the chain will get compromised. There will still be some wear which affects efficiency. So uh, yeah, step one, dedicate a race chain and training chain. It costs you no more. Um, like I've mentioned in the uh, FAQ guide with multiple chains, uh, sooner or later, you're always going to need another chain. So you know, if you've got a dedicated race chain, uh, when it's time for your training chain to be uh, moved on, because it's getting near to 0 0.5, your dedicated race chain moves over to be your next uh, training chain, and you buy one new chain as per normal to be your dedicated race chain. So it's just a super, super smart way to roll and saves you, you know, giving up possibly a few extra watts on race day because you're racing on a chain that's, you know, goodness knows how many thousands of k's old from hard training. So that's, I guess, yes, yeah, base step one. So now. For a lot of people, that's really as far as you need to go. Um, uh, and you know, a lot of people, especially if you're just club racing, honestly, just doing that is, is a brilliant step. Um, and you know, you're going to save some, some watts on race day. Step two is basically, I guess, especially if you're waxing, would be to have a dedicated race um, pot, or race wax pot, and a dedicated training wax pot. So that way you're not going to be, um, I guess, putting your race chain in the same pot of wax that's seeing the contamination that's being brought in by your training chain. And similar thing, when it's time to move your training uh, wax on, your race wax moves over to be your training wax and fresh bag goes into your race um, pot. So for one, the, the entire cost of one extra $16 uh, slow cooker or crock pot and pre-buying your next bag of wax, you've now got a dedicated race chain, you've got a dedicated uh, race uh, wax pot and Again, that's just that next step up, and that's brilliant. So, uh, you know, that wax because it's not seeing all those training pays is going to stay super clean for ages. So, getting to the next level, it's like, okay, I want to I really go to uh, a fully optimized race chain. So, what's a fully optimized race chain versus what we were just talking about then? So, a fully optimized race chain, like what you'll buy from, say, Zero Friction Cycling, Ceramic Speed, uh, Silka, and a number of other companies. Step one is doing a break-in run. So uh, that's with the factory grease on the chain. So they go through a controlled break-in run and then uh, that, that varies a bit depending on what chain it is. Uh, I can't give away too many uh, secrets on this. Um, some of this knowledge is obviously proprietary knowledge that uh, that's kind of partly why uh, you'll you know, purchase a, a race chain from a place that knows how to really make the fastest race chains. But in short, um, Shimano chains tend to come in a fairly sort of broken in state. They have a bit looser tolerances than other chains. So a Shimano chain, uh, 10 or 11 speed, will need a shorter break and run than other chains. Uh, their new 12 speed uh, chain uh, pretty much comes with the more precise tolerances uh, that will require um, a longer run. Um, so YBN, Campy, Shimano 12 speed, uh, they require yeah, I'll say a medium length run. SRAM chains come really, really tight. They run really tight tolerances, especially on their roller to inner plate shoulders. So SRAM chains, uh, you want to give them a really long break and run. So that's for like your axis road or if you're going to be racing on an eagle chain, things like that. So short, medium, long. Uh, moderate power and clean conditions. Obviously indoors ergo is best. You don't want to do your uh, break and run out in the dust if you can avoid it. So yeah, so step one is the initial break-in. That's going to, even going, uh, doing that in the, I guess, just even indoors, um, it will take a lot more cleaning rounds versus if you're just cleaning uh, a factory grease chain. So once you've done that, that's when you start going to your ultrasonic cleaning. If you're doing the full race optimization and you've got a, um, an ultrasonic. So now you're going to be taking chain from the break-in run and you're going to be putting it through, you know, Typically around, like I still do a container, the container cleans first. So I'll do 
usually somewhere around about sort of three to five container cleaning rounds first before then moving the chain to the ultrasonic. Um, and then obviously after degassing, um, the chain is going to see usually somewhere around three, maybe four uh, ultrasonic cleaning rounds on top of the, uh, the container rounds. Then it will be um, you know, flush rinsed uh, clean, um, depending on what cleaning solution you've used. So normally it will be probably be boiling water or if you've just used solvent, then it's going to be just methylated spirits. If you have, with race chains that, even if you have used uh, the UFO clean as opposed to a solvent after the boiling water flush rinse, uh, I still always use methylated spirits because again, it's just basically pure alcohol. It's going to make sure there's no film left of anything on the chain. You have got perfectly clean, clear chain metal. So then after you've, so we've now done the break-in and we've done a perfect clean. So we've made sure that we've cleaned that chain to absolute perfection after the break-in run. Now it comes down to a bit of a choice of um, obviously applying the, the lubricant. So what's going to be the ultimate way to apply um, your lubricant to your race chain? So that's going to come down to a little bit in regards to what lubricant are you using as your cho chosen lubricant. I'm going to assume initially say that it's wax. Now um, for wax, again, uh, ultimate, ultimate is to use fresh wax for the chain uh, every time uh, so that it's, you know, Clean, fresh wax has seen no other chains. All it's seen is a perfectly clean chain. Now, you can do that obviously in your dedicated race wax pot. You can put just enough wax in there to make sure you've got a submerge and give it a good swishing. Um, top level is to ultrasonic the wax in. Uh, for that though, you will need um, a really high quality ultrasonic. It will want to be quite a decent power. Um, you will basically fill up the, uh, the main area of the ultrasonic with um, water. Uh, so you'll, you'll normally boil that up to, I've got um, a temp control kettle to go with my temp control ultrasonics. You wanna boil that up to say 70 degrees, 80 degrees, pour the, the water into your ultrasonic. You wanna degas that, and this is really where you need the temp control because you're going to need to degas that for 10 minutes or the power is just really not gonna get through the water and into your uh, wax lubricant. You want that full cavitation power getting into where it needs to get. And if you don't have temp control, the temperature is going to drop and it's not going to be hot enough to keep your wax uh, you know, at, at a sufficient um, temperature that you know, it's going to apply properly. So yeah, you really, really need that temp control if you're going to do that. <clears throat> so this ultrasonic here, it's, it's a really good power. It's what's called a pulse and sweep wave ultrasonic. So it varies the frequencies and it really gets all the friction modifiers like the tungsten disulfide in the wax, really gets that flying around through the wax and does the best possible application. So, um, and again, if you can, uh, glass transmits better than plastic. So a glass container will be the way to go. Uh, so if you don't have that, like I said, don't stress out about it if you don't have a super duper ultrasonic because th these are really not cheap. And so obviously for me, uh, makes a lot of sense because I do this as a commercial service. For you at home, you've got to weigh up on you know, what you're going to spend to, to do that um, with an ultrasonic or are you going to be okay with a $16 slow cooker that you can just put fresh wax in and swish it around and honestly things will be super uh, just doing that. So uh, there are other lubricants that are great to ultrasonic in. So if you're not waxing, you're using another lubricant as your chosen lubricant for your race chain. Um, maybe it's absolute black graphene um, because you've got a you know, really long event or that's your chosen lube. So you can ultrasonic in your graphene lube um, by following uh, the same process, but you don't obviously want it at 80 degrees. It's too hot for graphene. You just want your surrounding water to be basically 30 degrees. That'll keep the graphene lube at a, just a really beautiful temp for it to be just a nice viscosity so that you can ultrasonic um, power wax that in extremely well. Same thing if you're ultrasonic in, in a lubricant like say Smooth, um, or obviously if you if you want to do it with um, you know even a, a top wet lube, it's like if, if you just want to take away any possibility that there could be uh, any penetration issues, then using a container that's going to be able to enable you to submerge it in your chosen lubricant that you wish to prepare for your race lube, um, something like this that obviously fits in your ultrasonic is going to be the perfect way to do it. Just don't forget um, the suitable temperature for the product. Don't forget to do the degas run. Glass is better than plastic. 
Um, some lubricants are not suitable for um, ultrasonic application uh, because they don't like being taken out of their container and put back in. Um, I don't know all of those because I haven't tested every lube for this, but um, probably the most notable one of the absolute top, you know, super fast lubricants is UFO drip. Um, if you pour out your bottle of UFO drip um, and ultrasonic it in, uh, it'll be great um, for that application. Um, so you'll have an absolute U Ripper uh, UFO drip prep chain. But the air exposure, um, by the time you've sort of done that and put it back into the bottle, when you go to reuse it uh, or re-lubricate re it, you'll find that it's it's gone a lot, lot thicker. So uh, it just uh, it sort of flashes off fairly quick. So you you may find that you sort of got one um, application out of that bottle because it might get too thick to apply going forwards. So a uh, UFO drip, I guess, is a notable one that you don't want to take it out of the bottle to do a ultrasonic application. Just follow UFO's application instructions if you're preparing a UFO drip race chain. So that's pretty much uh, how to make your super fast race chain. Um, and uh, generally speaking, a fully optimized race chain, so your braking run, your perfect cleaning, um, your either your, say your ultrasonic um, application of your lubricant, you're going to be looking at that chain will typically be around about a watt faster than if you had just say done a normal ultrasonic clean and, uh, and we'll say ultrasonic clean on wax. Now one what may not sound like a lot for all that extra effort, um, but you've got to sort of think about it like if you're doing an ultrasonic clean on wax, um, so if that's the sort of the chain prep service that you've purchased or the one that you're doing at home, that's already a really you know, well prepped chain. So it takes a lot more labour, a lot of extra time and steps to get that extra speed out of a chain. And, and yeah, and it's one of those things that practice helps. You'll find you'll get, you know, sort of better with experience at doing this stuff. So um, yeah, so it's about a watt, um, but that's at sort of 250 watt load. So it will be more at higher uh, power outputs and it will basically stay as a faster chain for the life of the chain. So that investment in sort of time and effort, you know, you, you do always have that lovely fast race chain. So, um, and you know, all up in total labor time, like it is pretty time intensive to do it properly. So even with, you know, a lot of experience and practice, Total labor time uh, for me to prepping a, a race chain, it, it's still normally around about the hour and a half mark. Like it's a, it's a you know, to, it, you're really taking, I guess, care and pride at every step when you're prepping a race chain because you're making a chain that's as fast as possible and it's going to be for someone, you know, or for yourself, you know, that's going to be important to them for their, you know, for their racing and their, you know, they're paying, you know, good money for you if you do sort of do that properly. So from the ZSC side, I guess I take a lot of care and pride in every, race chain that we prep and every one is meticulously prepped um, stage by stage uh, one at a time. So uh, me being a boutique operation, it's a bit different to say uh, a lot of you know, other companies that you know, they do them by obviously big batches. Um, can't guarantee that obviously it's better, but uh, you know, cause they've got their processes fairly dialed, but there's just obviously, yeah, there's, there's a difference in sort of how boutique specialist operation does it versus a, a mass production operation. And basically, you'd be sort of following the same steps as me, really, uh, doing it at home. Just, uh, just yeah, it takes a bit of time to get the practice up and whether or not you're going to have the same sort of level of equipment. Um, right, so re-optimizing. So you've made your awesome race chain and you've done a race or two. Now, when you need to re-optimize it is going to depend on the lubricant choice. So how long lasting is it? How many kilometers have you done? What sort of conditions were the kilometers in? But whatever time it needs to be that you should re-optimize that chain. So re-optimizing your chain is basically you're keeping your race chain mint you know, in between races ready for the next race. And you, if, if, if they're just like 60K club races, you might get three, four, five races out of your initial optimization treatment before you need to do it again. Um, or you know it might be one or two, uh, depending on a yeah, whole bunch of stuff. So re-optimization time, Again, it's going to come down a lot as well to what lubricant you're using. So uh, I'll go back to say your wet lubricant. <clears throat> if you've used a top wet lubricant, say like a Synergetic, Mix Friction, Rex Black Diamond, uh, Revo Lubes, then you're just sort of going through that ultrasonic cleaning process that we were talking about before to reset it back to perfect. And it's up to you as to whether or not you want to ultrasonic in the lubricant or apply it as per the manufacturer instructions. But you've basically reset that chain back to, you know, no contamination inside and perfectly re-lubed 
and now it's you know, put aside and ready for the next race. If it's a wax chain, so this is, uh, we're sort of following on pretty much, I guess, from where we were um, after the break-in and cleaning. So we're just really getting back to, um, we, we want to clean uh, the, I guess, the remains of the wax coating off that we've used. So be that the UFO clean or specific ultrasonic solution, uh, follow the exact steps that I went through before, re the degassing and how long you should do it, rinsing out with boiling water. Um, actually, obviously, if it's wax chain, do the boiling water rinse um, before you put it in the UFO clean as well. Finishing with methylated spirits, and then it's back to how you're going to apply that lube. So, really, the reoptimization is just following the steps again, sort of pretty much from what we would have done when we're making a race chain after the break in step. So, um, yeah, it's really just a matter of keeping that uh, chain mint. And so, yeah, it's really up to you as to what level you go to. You can have a, you know, really anywhere from just simply having a dedicated race chain to having a dedicated race chain and dedicated pot of wax or having a dedicated race chain and you are cleaning it perfectly um, either with a break-in run or without and you're resetting that as best you can as to you know, whichever level you want to go to um, ready for your next race. So, yeah, that's that's really the world's your oyster as to what level you want to go to. A lot of people, like I know that uh, for myself, uh, I started with just the race chain and then as I became, I guess, you know, more experienced and just, you know, you, you start to think about things, about, you know, which, which way or what level do I want to go to. I'm a tinkerer, I think like a, probably maybe a lot of cyclists, um, you just tend to, you know, start at the base level and then, you know, a little bit later, you move up to the next level and the next level until you've really got a system dialed that, that you know, works for you. So, um, yeah, I started just with a dedicated race chain. And then, you know, before I started ZFC, I had myself going with the full optimization stuff. So, uh, yeah, so that's hopefully in hopefully not too much of a rambling manner uh, and some kind of coherent structure uh, how to ultrasonic clean. Um, your chain and ultrasonic maintenance, as well as um, full race chain uh, prep and race chain re-optimization ready for the next races. So fingers crossed, we'll see if that makes sense. Let me know in the comments uh, if it was still terrible and I'll try again. So cool, thanks for that. Hope that helps and yeah, ride fast. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, uh, by the way, uh, thanks for watching and don't forget to uh, like and subscribe to the channel and other YouTube type things like share with your friends. Uh, so that'll keep you up to date with the latest low friction news and hints and tips. And um, yeah, also put any comments down below and I can uh, try to look at those and uh, take them into account for future episodes.